Hey everyone, it's that time of year where we put together our annual budget and expense video. So let's get down to it. Lynn, where are you? I'm all ready. <laughs> why, why are you dressed like that? I thought you said it was going to be an expensive night. No, I said we're going to talk about our expenses tonight. Okay, where were we? <laughs> well, I'm all dressed up. Uh, this is our expense and budget video for 2019. Uh, for those of you who follow us, we did a similar video at the end of last year uh, in 2018 showing our expenses. So we're going to tell you what we spent on our trip, owning the boat, and all those other little details for 2019. And then we'll do a little comparison between the two. Now, we're not talking about the ownership or I should say, we're not talking about the purchase of the boat. Uh, I did a video of that uh, a couple of years ago showing what we spent um, for the boat itself, what we considered to be things that would be needed to be done over time, uh, all, all those little details we took care of uh, in that video. This video is pretty much going to just be all about the expense of ownership once you already have the boat. And we are doing it, we're not finished our trip yet. Oh yeah, we're we're cutting in. This is uh, obviously if you if you do follow our channel, we're I, cutting in. <laughs> I think we uh, we just left Charleston or or Georgetown. I forget where we are on the videos, but we're not back yet. But by the time I get through editing the rest of the videos and we're back, it's going to be probably the end of March. So uh, we don't want to wait that long to do the, the video. A lot of people have been asking us for us because to do this because we did it in previous years and people have been waiting on it. So we decided to interrupt our regularly scheduled program and <laughs> throw this in. So anyway, let's get to it. This is our 2019 expenses. Um, the first thing we're gonna put up, let me put a slide up of our trip to the Exumas. Um, this um, was a three month trip that we took. We left last May 1st. We came back, uh, I think it was August 2nd, something like mm -hmm. that. So it was a three month long trip. And as you can see from the slide, our biggest expense on this trip was fuel. Uh, it's always that way. We spent $14,910 on fuel, and uh, this is a, it's a gas guzzler. Uh, if you've been following us, you probably know we have eight V92s uh, Detroit diesels on this boat, and uh, they like to eat gas. We get 0.7 miles per gallon. And we trip was, ooh, I think it was just over 4,000 miles this trip. Mm -hmm. So The boat likes to drink. We do. Yeah, <laughs> almost. <laughs> I think we spent more on alcohol than fuel. But, mm -hmm. uh, so 14,910, that's a 4,000 mile trip. That's basically what it came out to. Uh, the next uh, expense was oil. Uh, this uh, boat does like to drink oil as well. Uh, Detroit diesels are known for eating oil and leaking and things like that. So you can see we spent, you know, $165 for oil. Mm -hmm. I think we put a quart in each engine, maybe every 150 miles, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the next biggest expense for us was slips. Now we spent, was it $7,722 on slips during the trip. Um, this could have been a lot more money than it turned out to be. We were gone for a little over 90 days, and um, by my calculations, we spent about 60 of them in slips and about 30 of them anchored, anchored out. out. Or more down. Or more down, yeah. one or the other, uh, which was a lot more than we did in previous years. Uh, we're kind of getting the hang of it. We do like to anchor out when we can, especially when we're in the Bahamas. We just find that it's a lot easier to drop an anchor, take the uh, the Boston Whaler off the top of the boat, and just use that to go wherever we want to explore. Plus, it's beautiful just to yeah, be beautiful. on your own island and 
yeah. Yeah. But a lot of places it's just not feasible. So, you know, there's may not be a good anchorage or, you know, so we, we do get slips and we like to go to town. We like to explore, go to bars, you know, meet people and things like that. So we do often pull into slips. Uh, repairs, uh, we're pretty good this year. Uh, we spent a little over $1,700 on repairs and 1500 of that was because of that windstorm that we had down in Annapolis right after we left that blew out all our eyes in class. Uh, that was the biggest expense we had for uh, for repairs. Uh, it cost us about 1500 to take care of it. Oh, now, it would have been a lot more. Well, I don't know if it would have been more. What, what, oh. what, okay, well, I'll cut through that. Okay. Um, the 50, it actually cost us 1500 Now, we didn't pay somebody to do it. It would have cost us 1500 if we paid somebody, but what we decided to do was to buy one of those Sailrite um, heavy-duty industrial sewing machines. With the zigzag. Yeah. And then Lynn made all, and then we bought some rolls of eyes and glass, and Lynn did the repairs herself. From Sailrite. Yeah. Came out perfect, just as good as anyone else can do it, and uh, cost us about 1500 Better. Better. <laughs> cost us about $1,500. That's what it would have cost for us to get five pieces of Isinglass repaired anyway. And now we have a basically a free sale right. Lynn's also used it to fix some of the Isinglass over on the uh, on the carver. And um, we'll, I think we're gonna get a lot of use out of it. We'll be redo redoing the cushions. <laughs> yes, we're gonna redo some cushions. So anyway, it's, it's a great product. I, I, I think I filmed you doing it before. I don't know if we ever put that up in a video or if that was on one of our Patreon videos. I don't know. I'm not sure. But we'll, we'll do a video showing uh, what we do with the sale right uh, another time. And then the final expense for the trip was tips. And this is what, $540? Um, a lot of people ask what we tip or what the kind, you know the average is for tipping. Um, usually it kind of goes something like this. If we pull up to a marina and somebody's there, they kind of do the basic, the dock hand, you know, grabs the lines, ties us up and, you know, kind of see you later. It's like a $5 tip. Now, if he does a really good job and he's very friendly and he's, uh, he or she is, you know, tells us where the right restaurant to go to is or how, you know, directions. Helps us, you know. Helps us hook up our electric and yeah, our Yeah, kind of, you know, does a good job. That's more like a $10 tip. And then sometimes, you know, they really go out of their way. Um, you know, or maybe I'm doing a pump out and they're helping or I need some fuel. And, you know, that tends to be like a $15 tip. It's very rare for us to tip probably more than 15. I think occasionally a $20 tip when it's like... A tricky dock. A really tricky dock. Or sometimes the weather is really miserable and, the, and the, the, the poor guy's out there in the, in the rain and it's, you know... So, I mean, it does get up there. But I, I'm going to say our average tip is 10 bucks at a yeah. slip. So, or I mean, at, at a dock. And, uh, okay, I think that's it for the expense. You can see all together we spent 20... Excuse me. But you also tip when people put gas in. So how much do you tip when they help? With the well, gas yeah, it depends. That's usually a five or ten dollar tip if they're helping us put fuel in. Yeah, we're not always getting a slip. Sometimes we're pulling up to a fuel dock. And the so, same with pump. Yeah, so it's like a five to ten dollar tip there too usually. Now our total expense for the trip was twenty five thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars, um, which kind of seems like a lot. But you know, again, we were gone for uh, ninety days, so that comes out to about two thousand dollars a week. So I know that's probably the cost of a rental house down the shore. So anyway, let me compare that to, let's see here. I can do the um, trip that we did last year uh, in 2018. Now, if you're looking at the slide, you can see that uh, our fuel costs went up about $2,600. Um, that's because we went about 500, uh, 500 miles further this year than we did the year before. We went um, out to the Exumas and back, and then went to the Keys and back. So it added about 500 miles to the trip. We burned through a little bit more oil. That makes sense as well. Uh, slips, you can see that we did go up in slips a couple thousand dollars. And again, that's a longer trip. We it's spent, only because it's a longer trip, because we anchored out way yeah, more. Yeah, as a percentage, we anchored yeah. out more, but it was still a longer trip. Um, and then we have repairs. And that's where we kind of saved a lot of money this year. Because if you remember our last year's video, uh, first, I got myself stranded on a sandbar in Biscayne Bay and had to get towed off, and that cost us two grand. Uh, and then we hit a boulder or something in the ocean and bent our prop and bent our shaft, and that was like another uh, couple thousand dollars. And then we had the cutlass bearing pop out when we were run aground in uh, Alligator Pongo Canal. 
So mm -hmm. we had a number of repairs last year. Most of them could have been avoided if I was doing a better job as a captain, but that's a different story. But this year it was the zinc that came loose that was on the shaft. Yeah, we, we very, very small amount of repairs this year. We did, um, we had the zincs come loose, but I guess it just wore out. Um, and we had a diver go down and fix that. Um, Which made a similar sound to the, the burnt. The, uh, the, the, the cutlass bearing? Yeah, mm -hmm. it made a similar do do do. Yeah. And, but anyway, that, that was it, and, and the Isinglass, really. I think that was the only repairs we did the whole trip, and I was much more careful to not get myself stuck on a sandbar. You know, you'll, you get better as time goes on, I guess. Uh, and I made sure I avoided that boulder when we went out Little River Inlet coming out of uh, Myrtle Beach area yeah. into the ocean. I went way around that area. Uh, uh, then, and of course, tips were just slightly higher. And then the whole trip, if you look at it compared to the year before, is actually about 150 bucks less. And we did a 30 day longer trip. And it really, it really just came down to repairs. So does that mean if we do a longer, longer trip yes. this time, yeah, it that's will it. Be... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have, we're going to have to go for six months. This time it'll be even cheaper. <laughs> okay. Now let me uh, look at our yearly expenses without the trip. Um, this is more probably more useful information for most people because most people are not going to do this really long trip that we do. This is our expenses if we go nowhere. If we just have our boat and we keep it here at our home port. Uh, in fact, we didn't go anywhere else besides the trip this year. We didn't take this boat out at all. Uh, we have the Carver still, so when we felt like going out on the weekends, we just kind of took the Carver around the river. Uh, but So we never really took this boat on any other trip besides the one long trip. So you see our fuel cost was zero. We didn't spend anything. Now the oil filters, um, rate cores, you can see that's $420. Uh, that's the yearly oil change and filter change and things that we do, just the yearly maintenance is really all that is. Mm -hmm. Slips, um, the $9,500 for slips, that's what we pay to keep our boat here year round. We're not here year round, but we want to make sure we're locked in with our slip year round so we pay the whole fee. Um, they do give us a little bit of a discount, but uh, that's what it costs us to keep the boat here in Philly. Uh, repairs outside of the trip, was about $75. Um, yeah, it was next to nothing. I don't even remember what that was, but well, whatever. We had no real repairs other than the, the, the stuff that happened on the trip. Uh, now, improvements. I have $750 for improvements. Now, uh, basically an improvement to me is something I'm doing to the boat to make the boat better, not fixing it, but just improving the boat. Uh, what we did this year was we updated some of our electronics. We bought uh, a couple of new tablets and some mounts to hold them. Which are really nice. Yep, and then uh, oh, and then we bought a new EPIRB. Yeah. So um, I'm going to do a, a whole video on electronics coming up because a lot of people ask about that, and it, it just take a take up too much time right now. But we're going to do a, a video showing the the software we use, the uh, the apps that we're using, uh, the, the the hardware and all that. Uh, it'll be coming up in probably about a month or two. Okay, the what do we have next? Um, maintenance amateurization. Uh, if you watched our last video or the one that we did of purchasing the boat, I had mentioned that there are some things that you have to do on a boat that um, can be expensive, but they also last a long time, so like a paint job. or uh, uh, In this particular case, what it was is a year and a half ago, we had the boat up out of the water and we were fixing the cutlass bearing. And while we were out, I just decided to do some preventative maintenance. I bought new um, shaft seals. We put all new uh, cutlass bearings in. We did a bottom job. And what I did is I broke that out over the life of each thing. For instance, the shaft seals will probably last 10 years, maybe more, I don't know. Um, whereas the bottom job's probably good for four years. And what I did is I kind of broke them down into how much uh, amateurs, uh, I amateurized the cost of these repairs or maintenance items over the, their lifespan and divided it up. And what I came out was uh, $2,300 a year. So if you look at our previous year's budget, it was in there as well. And you'll see it in there next year too. Unless I have to do something else that's a preventative maintenance item that I will add to it. So $2,300 a year um, went for uh, the... the um, the amateurization of the maintenance, the cleaning. Now we do all our own cleaning, uh, except in the very beginning of the year, I have one of my maintenance men from the, uh, my property. We own a number of rental properties and I have a maintenance man who works for me and I have him come down and help me wax the boats because it's it's a pain, it's a big boat. And you know, he just spends, you know. Plus we do both boats. 
yeah, we do both boats. And, you know, he comes down for like two days and helps me. And mm -hmm. so I, I pay him to do that. Uh, so there's $400 for cleaning. Insurance was $4,100 last year. And um, I wish I'm paying that this year. It actually went up. But tips were $600. That's tips to our, our local uh, dock masters and uh, assistant dock master. And then miscellaneous, we had about $470 in miscellaneous expenses. So altogether, we spend about $18,615 to own this boat every year and keep it here in Philadelphia. Now, I can show you what we did the year before and um, compare the two. Yep. Oh, that's the wrong slide. It doesn't matter to you guys because you can't see what I'm looking at. Um, Just the cannons right there. No, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's on this side. With total yearly expenses. Okay. What I did is I put together a slide that has our total yearly expenses. Now, this is the cost of the trip and the cost of keeping our boat here year round. So, this and is. And once again, what? alcohol not included. Yeah, alcohol not included. <laughs> yeah. This is the cost of what we spent on the boat. Now, it, it's just a combination of the two. You can see, you know, um, just so you can kind of get a feel that if you were going to have a boat like this and you were going to take long, big trips, you know, you might be curious what the numbers were. As you can see, it came out to $43,732 uh, for the combined trip and keeping it here. And then I also put a slide together comparing that to last year. So you can see we actually spent a couple of thousand dollars less in 2019 than we did in 2018. Uh, again, most of that was because I didn't have as big of uh, repairs. repairs you know? um, other than that, you can see that the fuel was up a little bit, you know, slips. I was up significantly in slips, like $3,500 roughly yeah. there, but I was down 6,000 in repairs. Um, improvements, I guess we didn't spend as much improving this year. Uh, the maintenance amortization stayed the same. Uh, cleaning was roughly the same. Our insurance did go up $1,000. Um, tips were roughly the same and miscellaneous price or miscellaneous expenses were roughly the same. Mm -hmm. So that's what it came to altogether. So anyway, that's, uh, that's our uh, cost for the year. Uh, it came in pretty much in line with what we expected. And, um, if you have any questions, you know, um, you know, comment below, you know, we'll, we'll answer anything, uh, anything that we can. Or uh, ideas for us too, because yeah. I love that. Yeah. Tell us how to send, yeah, tell us how to save some money. <laughs> Besides staying home, which we're, we're just never going to do. <laughs> and also, like, let us know what you do when you take trips and stuff. Yeah, sure. We'd be curious to see um, anyone else's information. You know, there's not a lot of people putting this up on the uh, on YouTube. I, we see a lot of sailboat channels talking about budgets and things like that, but it's 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 rare to uh, see the the powerboat guys doing it. Uh, I know. Um, what's it? Uh, searching for seashells. I think they did a, a video on budget, which was nice. Uh, but I'd like to, you know, see if there's anyone else out there that has information or, you know, you can kind of compare what we do to what you do, you know, shoot us, shoot us a line, make a comment, uh, visit our Facebook page, L look at us, look for us in a local bar. You know. okay. Oh, and then we're going to do our um, list of, of our travel this year. We are going back down to the Exumas because um, we loved it so much and we are meeting up with a bunch of friends and family and um we're going to do the southern half of the exumas this year yeah. and also key west because yeah. you got to yeah yeah we're, we're gonna we're gonna try and get as far south as we can uh, in the exumas this year I, we, we're gonna make the trip about the same length so i don't think it's gonna be any longer because we really do want to be back here safe and sound in the northeast before hurricane season so we'll probably do the same thing. Try and, and where's, back the, where's the other place you were talking about that maybe we might go? Um, oh, we're thinking maybe if we have some time, we might shoot across the Dry Tortugas from Key West. We haven't done that, and uh, we've talked to some people who, who've done it, and it seems like a pretty cool trip. So we might try to squeeze that in. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, I think it's really we're going to shoot across, go to the Exumas. And this time, last time, the furthest south we got was Staniel Key. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, I think we're going to go at least to Georgetown, and who's, who knows? Maybe if we have time, we'll go further. But anyway, um, you shoot us a line, you know, give us a, I can't say give us a call. <laughs> but anyway, that's, uh, that's it for this video. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you out on the water. Yeah. Cheers. Splash. Roger out. <laughs>